Hello everyone, my name is Richard De La Rosa. I will be presenting my interpersonal communication project. I hope you enjoy. God bless. The goal of the interpersonal project is to review my overarching goals in my life as a communicator. We will review how to enlarge the conversation, how my background and behavioral blend affects communication, the positive and negative aspects of my behavioral blend, and how I can adapt to different situations. What are the barriers to communication? The solutions and noise pollution will be reviewed, and finally an action plan presented. My overarching goal is to build a bridge over all barriers to communication. Burley Allen speaks of a level one listener. A level one listener is a person that listens from the heart and reaches out with understanding, caring, and empathy. I also want to become, according to Stewart, a mindful listener. A mindful listener is someone that uses a wide spectrum of listening skills to receive, retain, sustain, and attend to the message of the speaker. Once received, I can respond in a correct way to encourage the speaker to express themselves. I would like to expand a little bit on these overarching goals. The first one is to become a level one listener. A level one listener is empathetic. A level two listener is a person that is more concerned with the content and tends to be emotionally detached. A level three listener is a quiet person. They tend to be passive and also fake attention. They're more withdrawn completely. Our goal is to become a level one listener. On the issue concerning mindfulness, mindfulness brings and is based on the premise of one point of concentration. One point of concentration are listeners that try to embrace the totality of the speaker. They observe their nonverbal cues as well. Mindfulness is very important because you embrace the moment which creates a terrific present and also a terrific past. It is the best way to move forward in creating a hopeful future in a growing relationship. Before we can become great communicators and great listeners, we must define what communication and interpersonal mean. Communication, according to Stewart, is the continuous, complex, collaborative process of verbal and nonverbal meaning making. Interpersonal comes into play in the kind of communication that happens when people involved talk and listen in ways that maximize the presence of the personal. What fascinates me are the features of communication. These features make communication dynamic. There is meaning, choice, culture, identities, conversations, and next thing. Meaning, we as humans, our interactions are always seeking to give meaning to life. Choice, we are always confronted with decision making. Culture, our diversity makes us distinct. Identities, Communicating is a process of co-creating the self, the personal, our own individual identities. Conversations is the vehicle used for the communication process. And next thing is always asking the question, what can I hope to happen next? Interpersonal communication means enlarging the conversation. Susan Scott, in her article, Fierce Conversations, tells us that the conversation is the relationship. 
If we want our relationships to grow, she encourages us to have fierce conversations. Engaging helps us to learn from the other and allows us to have self-awareness for increased productivity. Being aware of my personality traits helps me become a better communicator. Carpinell's Uniquely You personality assessment helps to determine my behavioral blend. The four quadrant model of basic human behavior covers dominance, influence, steadiness, and compliance, which spells out DISC. Being aware of my personality trait. The assessment reveals my behavioral blend of what is expected of me and what is me. I am submissive and inspiring, people-oriented and relational. What is actually me, I am more passive than active, demonstrate strong people skills, influence and interact with others. The DISC model is an excellent model. Why? Because it can help us to assess where others are coming from. It's a basic tool that can help relationships. For instance, if I am a high C, I am task oriented but more passive. What if I'm confronted with a person with a high D, which is more dominant, task oriented, wants to get the job done, wants to get it done fast? How do I respond to a person with that type of tempo? Or how can they respond to my personality trait? That's why this model is excellent because it teaches us what we can do. Every person has positive and negative influences with their behavioral blend. My positive influence is that my strengths are in friendliness and kindness, ability to solve different problems, think in depth, not dominant or demanding, not concerned in being in charge or the boss. The negative side to my personality trait is that I neglect being firm against those who may try to control me. I must not let my emotions control me and I have to be careful with what I say and how I say it because it may be very hurtful and critical. Our personal background and our behavioral blend is what creates conversation. And remember, conversation is the relationship. My personal background is a product of childhood experiences, formal training, psychological limitations, and socialized attitudes. Also, how we've been stroked. Every person has a need to be touched and recognized by others. The social environment plays a big part in our lives. It influences specific behavior patterns that we adopt. With diverse personality traits and a variety of backgrounds, create potential barriers for communication. Three in particular that I focused on was misunderstanding meta messages the effects of emotions on listening, and how perception, reception, and attention affect our connection. Meta messages is the unspoken message about the relationship between speaker and hearer. What is said by the way something is said, or who says it, or the fact that it is said at all. Another powerful factor in communication is our emotions. Experiencing high emotions, either positive or negative, usually interferes with listening ability. Me personally, I am an emotional person. I must learn to control my emotions. The third is perception, reception, and attention. Listening is highly selective, subjective experience. Information that conflicts with the listener's present idea and beliefs may simply be tuned out. We can overcome barriers by understanding meta messages. We can learn self-control over our emotions, thinking objectively. In perception, 
positive perception is needed for positive reception and full attention of the speaker. Noise pollution can be both internal and external. Internal examples include filters, negative affirmations of self, internal negative thought processes, and biased listening. External factors can be noise like machinery, stressful deadlines, interruptions like cell phones, and chewing gum. We can break down filters by reshaping beliefs. Incorporate supportive languages to attack negative affirmations of self. Adopt going somewhere cycle to tackle internal negative thought processes. Biased listening can be avoided by not judging automatically. External solutions reduce noise. Stressful deadlines can be met by managing time. Interruptions like cell phones should be shut off. And illnesses, rest, retreats, and prayer. We can My action plan goal is to listen empathetically and to communicate with compassion through nonverbal cues. I will aim to act by directing my voice to set the tone. Maintain silence to acknowledge the other. Face to express emotions, words to edify, and gestures to provide feedback. Thank you for giving me this opportunity to share my interpersonal communication project. I hope that you can take this information and utilize it to enhance your relationships with God, others, and even yourself. Praise God and God bless.